It's a red belted polypore. And uh, even colors like that like that tree. <laughs> um, there's actually another one over here. Red belted polypore and it's good for your health. Boosts your immune system and works against uh, cancer. And you can also see it's all right underneath. Some of them you can actually cut with a knife here and I've just seen that on YouTube I usually take the whole mushroom you cut that and take the lower part off because that's should be enough to create a tea you boil it for a few hours and that's it and here's a younger version of what seems to be the red belts of polypore and here's some what looks like not the same it might have been the red belts one but they're definitely dead Look so, and here's like a crooked weird one. It does seem to have the same red belt, but uh, sometimes it can be hard to determine what they are. But there's something called hoof something, hoof mushroom, and I, that's not that one as far as I know. Hey, that's nice. Leaf mushroom, and if you find it there, it might be somewhere close by. It might not be worth it, but it's worth checking it out if that's actually another one. Yeah, it actually is. A little older one, as it's more yellow, it seems. Yep. Here's a disclaimer if at any point during this video that you see me doing something and you want to do it yourself, go ahead. It's not my responsibility, but I reckon and expect that you do your own research um, before doing anything. But I would say a great research would just be go out in the forest, explore, and bring your phone if you want, and just look things up, take pictures of it, understand what's in the forest and how you can benefit from it. So do your research and, and uh, everything's going to be good. But don't eat something just because I would. Don't pick something just because I would. But uh, it's all up to you. With knowledge, we know what to do. If we don't have any knowledge or experience, we don't know what to do. So don't go around doing something stupid, cooking a mushroom you don't know what is. If you're in doubt, if, you're, if you haven't gotten it verified by other people, then just an app. Ask people. There's people on... Uh, different forums from Reddit and Facebook and all these places. So start there and, you know, maybe start in the forest, but then go there and uh, ask questions. Enjoy yourself. And here's something on its way that I don't know what is. I've not seen it before. Maybe when it comes all the way out, I know what it is. Here's some moisture and stuff. He has found some plants and some grass that he likes. Not a pretty sight, but this is... It is actually foxglove, and I just looked it up on Planto, uh, an app for plants. This is poisonous, but it's also medicine. Meaning that in very small dosage, uh, this is can um, this includes diatoxin which is a heart medicine but only taken like 0 0.3 micrograms it helps the body uh, well the heart muscle but it will also lower heart rate so it's not something to go around eating yourself but uh, when you know the plant you know what not to eat and uh, if you are a medicine man or woman you might want to know its properties but it, it just grows in the forest right now and in some people's gardens. So, um, foxglove, lesson learned today. And here we have a tunnel to the underworld. So when touched they turn blue or almost blackish and you have a brown stem on them 
it all looks like a brown stem bullet mushroom. Probably there's a better name for them, but uh, that's what I translate from Danish. I actually use my intuition a lot when uh, collecting mushrooms because some of them you can't really see. They're uh, not easy to notice. And when I'm even saying this, I've been standing here for like five minutes looking and found all these, but look just next to me, there's actually a mushroom down here. And that's exactly what I was looking for. And my intu intuition told me there's another mushroom. This one is just too old. I don't know if you can see, but it's falling, up, falling apart. But my intuition kept leading me back here um, because I felt there was a mushroom here. And the way that I do it, I, I think of the mushrooms I want to find. And I know it sounds strange to you if you don't uh, trust your intuition or you don't know what intuition is maybe. But as I'm, ed I'm educated as a clairvoyant, it doesn't mean that you have to be educated. It just means that you have a potential of becoming one, but um, or working with it at least. But this early morning, I decided to go with a, on a walk with him and uh, and go through the forest again because I did that last time, just a new area this time, more pine trees here. Um, and I actually don't know where I'm going. I try to think of, it's almost medita meditative. I think of nothing and I just let my eyes lead me and sometimes I suddenly turn right. I'm like, I don't know, even, I even question myself while doing it, being aware that I'm unaware. Um, and then suddenly I stop somewhere, even though I'm going through some thoughts and other things, and I start looking around and I find mushrooms just where I am. So it's super strange. I don't know really how it works because sometimes I can't seem to get it turned on, but it helps me to meditate. And just being here in the forest with the sun, uh, sunrise is just very medita meditative, uh, but it's still early morning, so I'm not usually used to speaking right now anyways i'm gonna keep hunting and hopefully find some more with or without my intuition a few times i've been led back to the same place i was just there and i was like I, I think there's more, this, this feeling that I missed out on something. And that's very much why I like seeking for mushrooms. It's because that I have FOMO. That's totally what I have. Fear of missing out that I might find something really nice. And so I keep searching. Sometimes it even the day turns to night and I'll be here with a flashlight or something, just trying to find something. And it's, it's not that I don't have anything yet, but it's food. And so, I don't know, it's not that I don't have money to buy food. It's just that this is just amazing, getting free food from nature, also respecting nature in this aspect of only picking what you need. And so the ones that I don't need, I dry them. And so when it's not season anymore, I can eat those as well. When you're being led back to something that you don't know what is, or you were just there and you're wondering why you feel like going back, go back and figure out that feeling. That's what's working with for me with mushrooms, even in relationships, going back, finding out, no, it wasn't right. But what I learned was this, there's always a lesson to be learned, I'm guessing. Maybe it resonates with you if you ever went back to something in life, thinking maybe there's more and you realize there's not, but you needed that lesson. That's why you went back. That's why you miss the old things is because you, don't give it a chance or you gave it too much of a chance but you have a hard time letting go. This time I'm not letting go. I'm definitely picking that one. Here's another red belted polypore, a younger one. I feel like taking this one. And there's also another one. I do actually have quite a bit of this already because I found two the other day. But uh, it's good for your immune system. And so if there's other people who needs this, I have it in stock. Uh, and there's this beauty and I really feel like getting some of this because that must contain so much good stuff with all that mushroom and it came off very easily so maybe yeah again this mushroom grows inside the tree this is also just a fruiting body but you can actually take the lower part of this usually and uh, you can even use it uh, 
in wound healing as far as I know, but that's the birch tree polypore is better for wound healing as far as I know, but I'm not sure. So this is new to me. And here is some red cracking bolites because the trees have changed. It's no longer pine trees. It looks like to be birch trees. So these like to stay around these trees better than other places. Also edible, just not as tasty and also smells a little bit sour. Yeah, a little more suede on the top. Looks a little bit softer than the others. Let me compare for you. Next to it, you see the bolete over here. That's the brown stalk bolete. And then the red cracking and you can see it's red in the cap where it's been eaten by something. So then you'll know the difference. You see the brown stalk, brown stalk and and down here it's it's red cracking. It's a red stalk. It's hard to see here in this light, but um, both good. But I would mix the the red cracking with the brown stalk bully because it's just um, not as tasty, but still good if you have like a sauce or anything. It fills you up and it tastes really nice. It's just if you eat them alone, not the best. And here we have some turkey tail, but it seems to be the brown version and not the original one, or maybe they're just so young, but the older ones tends to have black, a darker color, almost like the red belted one we already have here. It has that darker color. It should have that darker color in there. So this, the, the brown one, I don't know what you can use for. Um, so I'm not gonna pick it. not gonna help equally as much as if I had a knife but the mushroom actually grows underneath the tree in the soil so it's not like I'm ruining anything it's just it's a good idea just to leave some of the mushroom but um, it really grows in the tree so it's kind of bullshit but if you have the mycelium it's gonna create more mycelium and more mushrooms these are just the fruits or whatever mycelium is going on underneath all of this soil there's like thousands and millions of small mycelium, just like nerves going around this tree underneath the earth. It could go further and really far away. And this is just the fruiting body. So this is what pops up of that mycelium, but it's all alive underneath this tree or in the soil, deep down. A big part of uh, seeking for mushrooms is that they can be hard to identify. So this one I found close to a hill and they're both brown in the bottom here on the stalk both yellow and they stain blue when you can see in the middle here between my next to my eye they stain blue <sighs> smelling them is a huge thing that's something you should do a lot of the time to know the smells because what's interesting is that sometimes you'll walk around and you'll be like <laughs> smells like that and you know there's one nearby sometimes um, but if you're in doubt, because this is lighter on the cap than this is, this one I know is the brown stock bolete, and it smells like it too. This also does, but since it's very light here, it can look and seem similar as far as I learned. Uh, there was even a snail on here trying to eat away some of it, which I understand because it's probably tasty. Um, you should never eat these if they're not cooked you will get some stomach problems if you do that. But you can taste almost, and I think you can taste pretty much any mushroom, in Denmark at least, but it, it's always on your own. Uh, you're always on your own on this. Uh, I take no responsibility for whatever you do. But I learned to nipple, and that's something I learned recently. So just take a little bite, don't swallow, just chew it up. 
And if it turns really bitter, it's the bitter bullet. Mm. Mm -hmm. Tastes really good. So this is not the bitter bullet. I just know it, it seems to have a lighter cap. So you can see even where I took a bite, it turns a little bit blue. Um, so this is edible when cooked and cleaned a little bit on the top. I guess nobody dies from eating a little bit of leaves and dirt. Um, that's definitely something my girlfriend learned that taught me because she cooks them just, you use just a brush and um, she's not, I'm very OCD with these things. She's not. And so I've eaten her food many times, didn't die. So I'm going to learn from that. Um, anyways, I hope this helps you a little bit. Remember always to do your research and I look at YouTube to learn. I look into books. I look uh, into the apps called Picture Mushroom. I look into Shroomy, Wikipedia, just search the internet even when you're in the forest if you have coverage. If not, take photos of the mushroom if you don't want to bring it with you. But you might as well bring it with you if you picked it already. You can always throw it back into the woods if you want to when you come back next time. Uh, if you if you're not going to eat it so um, or you can put it in your garden if you want to eat it next year so Anyways, I hope you learn from it Do your research This is the third sign. I've seen someone else being here. You see they cut over the stem here a few days ago They cut over this one to check it out and I don't know why they would cut it over and not eat it but probably because this one has worms inside of it but I'm not that picky I would just choose the side of it where there's no worms some of this part um, so that's a way to check if it has any worms inside and I will know when I get my knife if some of these has worms um, and it's just not as pleasant eating them if a snail just has eaten a little bit like this that's fine you can cut that away if it's slimy you just cut that away um, it's like an apple, you know, it's just someone took a bite of it and then one side just cut that way. You see, there's no worms in this, so I think it's a waste just throwing this mushroom back. I would take the parts that I wanted and then uh, leave the rest in the forest because this mycelium in here, in the ground, could actually turn into another mushroom eventually if the conditions are right. So just leaving the mushrooms underneath the soil like this it does have spores down here uh, these spores down here will spread of course so if, if you see a mushroom lying around you might as well put it down side put the down the bottom down like this because the spores can go into the soil and new mushrooms can form so next year you know there's more mushrooms here It's a super special one because I do believe this is a bolete and I'm actually gonna pick it just to show you this is a rotten and it's not rotten because it turned rotten it's a type of bolete mushroom that will actually look like this and it's inedible it's not I don't know if it's poisonous or not but it's definitely inedible and you can see it doesn't really look that tasty it's a very soft mushroom it's bendy and all that and, and it looks like moldy and I do believe it's called something like moldy bolete or something like that I'm gonna smell it <laughs> it doesn't smell moldy it just smells earthy like any other old mushroom but I'm gonna put it back in the soil so if it has any spores it has a chance to grow again oh this is a good place here we have one there's a few others there there's one there there seems to be one over there, and probably more. So let me show you this. Actually has a live uh, insect inside, eating up, living inside the mushroom. So this mushroom you wouldn't be eating because it's just filled with tiny insects. One way of knowing there's insects is where I picked it. You see there's holes in the stem like that. 
sometimes that is because of the insects crawled up through the stem to eat the mushroom. If you tend to want to dry these for uh, when it's out of season again, um, there's always the king bolete, which is more nice to save. But if you do want to save these ones, always cut them up before you dry them because it's going to dry faster. And also, even better, you can see if there's any insects inside of it. So always cut them up before drying or eating. Also reminding you, being in nature in general helps your health. There's negative ions in the air that's created around the oceans, in the forests. All this makes you more joyous, having more energy for the day. So if you start your mornings like this, and I'm not a morning person, but I know this from science, it helps you. It actually can help cure a depression or anxiety, having a daily routine like this in nature. Just a reminder if you want to know. The mushrooms I'm looking for are really great at being found some place close to old trees. Just like these ones here. Uh, I don't know if you remember from before. The red belted polypore, it looks like to be. They're very red belted at least. But finding mushrooms is better where there's conferous trees, like old trees rotting. Just as I left for the car, I found this. Uh, Amanita mascaria, or mascara. Uh, poisonous, you'll get sick if you bite from it, but if you dry it and you boil it, but you have to really research it first. You can use it as medicine and psychedelic. Uh, mushrooms, but the mess medicine part is really nice. Here's some other, and that's a common puffball. I think this I found this just the parking lot, just out there, and I spotted these. The only thing is, you see it's starting to get a little bit darker here. It might have spores inside, so you can't eat it, but the young ones are edible, and you see they're all white through. And you see how almost like a diamond dust falling off. Very tasty. You can eat them fresh and you can eat them uh, uh, fried. I always fry them because you want to be sure. But um, I don't know anything other than it looks like this and has these things falling off. And it's all white like this. As long as they're not dark inside when you cut them, you're going to be just perfect. Super tasty. There's some more inside here. I'm gonna pick it. You see how they just grow on. They really don't have a crazy root system. This is the mycelium I talked about. The white part growing underneath the ground. That's the mycelium. And this is just the fruit from that mycelium. So hopefully more of them comes up. If I leave some of this behind. Because it can turn into more mycelium. I found some more deep under these trees. They can get very much bigger than this, but uh, you see the mycelium, all this white one underneath, that is what forms these ones. So that's the fruit. So I'm just gonna take that off. Even though I could eat this part, I'd rather have them growing back. And so I'm gonna put this back as good as I can so more can grow. And it's a tiny one. So I'm going to take that part out. And you see, these ones are way too old to eat. Because they have turned brownish. And I'll show you why. And you have to be careful because inside of them are puff. And they're not healthy. If you have lung conditions, you want to stay away from these. And don't step on them. You're not going to die from them, but that's just not good for your health. But if you get them before they're uh, brown like this, there's a chance like these that you can eat them. So stay away from the brownish ones and keep to the white ones. It's quite old. It's hard enough, but this part is, is you can see it already released its spores. The more holes it has, the less taste is gonna be so 
hopefully that is just gonna make more mushrooms that is gonna conclude my trip today in the forest this is what i got out of it some medicinal uh, mushrooms and some edible ones thank you for joining me uh, if you are not following me or subscribing or anything you're very welcome to do so if you'd like the video if you learn anything share it with someone who needs to know or ask a friend to join you on a mushroom seeking trip and uh, I hope to see you in another video again uh, always amazing getting the comments from you people being curious nice friends and followers I love it and this newfound hobby and interest of mine is just it's only a two-year-old well I started two years ago very little actually I started long ago forgot about it and now I realized it again as my girlfriend told me she was going on a mushroom hunt and I thought why not do the same so I did one myself and I started researching you don't always need an education what is an education really it's reading about it it's having getting experience after you can do that yourself but everything as long as we have the internet or books